Um, it is uh, Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. Uh, I'm Senator Mary Kunish, and I am calling the Education Finance Conference Committee to order. Uh, I think uh, we will go around and just do introductions really quickly. Is that right? Is that what you want to do? We did that last time, so let's not do that. And uh, I think we all know each other pretty well by now. Uh, and so I think we're going to start this evening off with um, Article 11. I'm going to start at the end. Uh, we have a special guest here this evening, and um, we are looking forward to him giving us a few, uh, a few words, introducing himself. And so I think what we'll do is we'll start with Article 8, and um, I'm going to ask or excuse me, Article 11, and I'm going to ask Mr. Strom to please walk us through the article, but when you get to the amendment, if you would just pause and let us know. Madam Chair, members, thanks very much. You have in front of you tonight an Article 11 roadmap oriented on the uh, eight and a half by 11 paper landscape style, and it lists the positions proposed for adoption in the bill tonight. Uh, the first uh, three uh, lines on this, the first, first uh, uh, or I'm sorry, the first two lines on this refer to the Office of the Inspector General. Uh, there's going to be an amendment offered tonight, the A64 <coughs> amendment for the Office of Inspector General. The House and Senate formatted things a little differently, so that's why it's listed as two separate sections. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and have members turn to the amendment, the amendment in their packet is labeled A64. And while they're all, while everybody's getting to their amendment, um, I would like to in, invite Patrick Wolfgram to the podium, please. <clears throat> Mr. Strom, would you just go through the amendment real quick and then um, we'll have some good words from Mr. Wolfgram. Uh, Madam Chair, members, yes, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, the language has been under uh, uh, discussions with the department, uh, with Nathan Hopkins from our office, from the Senate as well. And uh, briefly, what you have in front of you is language that differs a little from what uh, left the House and Senate floors. Uh, uh, in subdivision 1A, the definitions are defined for abuse, fraud, waste, and also the department program. And importantly, if people look at line 1.23 and 1.24, uh, department program, this is new language, includes state and federal aids or grants received by a school district or charter school or other program participant. So that language in that location is different than before and will come into play a little bit later. Uh, there's also uh, a, a new definition, I believe, of the program participant. Um, and, and that's the end of the, the substantive changes, I think, to, to or let me, uh, uh, that's the end of the definitions in, in subdivision one. And then starting on line 2.14 is the application of, of the fraud, waste, and abuse definitions. And, and you can see from the way that's written that those include the decisions, the, the, the um, none of those include decisions on instruction, curriculum, personnel, or other discretionary policy decisions made by a school district, charter school, or cooperative unit, or any library, library system, or library district. So essentially then what this means is for those organizations, those decisions, instruction, curriculum, personnel, or other discretionary policy are not within the uh, definitions of fraud, waste, or abuse that the Inspector General is to look at. Uh, Madam Chair, members, then in subdivision two, this is similar to uh, 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 before regarding the uh, hiring, reporting, and procedures of the office. A little bit has been uh, rewritten there, but essentially uh, the, the intent is roughly the same as what left uh, uh, the House and the Senate. Um, then uh, on uh, the bottom of page three, in terms of the sanctions, 
Uh, this language is new, and this makes a distinction uh, uh, between state aids and grants. And as you can see from the language, starting on 3.29, the uh, subdivision does not authorize any sanction that reduces, pauses, or otherwise interrupts state or federal aid to a school district, charter school, or cooperative unit, or a library system. So essentially what's happening is a distinction is being made between aids and grants and the in terms of the aids, while the inspector general has full investigatory authority, the inspector general does not have the authority to withhold or interrupt those aid payments to, to the school districts, charter schools, cooperatives, and libraries. All right, members, uh, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Strom. So with that, um, uh, Chair Joachim, would you like to move the A64? Yes, uh, Chair Kunish, I'd like to move the A64. And I'd also like to welcome um, Mr. Wolf Graham to the committee. Thank you so much for being here and for all the cooperation between MDE and the Senate and the House. The bi House came in with a pretty bipartisan bill and thanks again to uh, Representative West and Representative Krisha for helping us out with that and um, would like to hear a little bit from the Inspector General to see if um, you find this doable um, and also to state your name for the record. I should have said that first. Thank you, Madam Chairs and Committee. Uh, my name is Patrick Wolfgram, W-O-L-F-G-R-A-M, and I serve as the Minnesota Department of Education's Inspector General, <clears throat> and I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And uh, the Minnesota Department of Education, the Office of Inspector General, appreciates the opportunity to address the committee about these changes. As the first statutorily created Office of Inspector General in the state of Minnesota, the Minnesota Department of Education appreciates the efforts made by the committee and bipartisan to, to get it right. And I know a lot of effort went into making this need legislative change uh, successful. And with the tools that it provides, the Office of Inspector General is now able to perform the essential functions we have entrusted to us and to deter and investigate fraud, waste, and abuse in the Minnesota Department of Education programs. Thank you, Mr. Wolfgram. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Wolfgram? Seeing none, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, welcome to our committee. Thank you for um, taking on this huge responsibility. It's uh, not a light responsibility, but we know that uh, the state of Minnesota will be better off having somebody in a position that can look for these kind of issues. So thank you very much for stopping in and uh, introducing yourself, and let us know if you ever need anything from us. Thank you so much, Madam Chairs, for all the work that you've done uh, into the committee and to the rest, of, le the rest of the legislature, and of course to Adosh and the commissioner mm -hmm. for their work. Absolutely. And Ms. Holden as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So members, uh, any, I'm just going to check one more time, any discussion on the A64? All right. Uh, all those in favor of adopting the A64 uh, amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it, and the A64 is adopted. All right. Well, next up, we have um, the A30. Mr. Strom, would you continue with your explanation? Madam Chair, mem members, the next amendment in your packet is the A30 amendment. This has to do with the Department of Education's budget. Uh, essentially, the budget for the Department of Education is being increased by $130,000 for fiscal year 25. This is for the state school librarian position at the Department of Education. In a separate article, you'll see the uh, appropriation, uh, or the uh, funding, rather, for the state uh, school librarian will come out of the state school library aid. But for fiscal year 25, that amount is an addition to the uh, MDE budget, and that's what the amendment on line 1.4 is doing, is to, uh, is to pay for that position, Madam Chair. Great. Um, any questions or discussion, members? All right. Um, I move the A31, oh, excuse me, A30 
uh, amendment. And all those in favor of adopting the A30 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, seeing none, the A30 is adopted. Next, we are going to move on to, let's see here. Oh, Mr. Strom, would you continue, please? Madam Chair, Thank members, uh, the, for recommendation for adoption, the next three provisions include Senate Section 8, having to do with the task force on the permanent school fund. Uh, section 9 is the funding for that task force. And Section 10, which was similar in both bills, is the appropriation uh, for the uh, in, uh, IT upgrades for the, uh, for the Professional Educator Licensing and Standards Board for Pelsby. And that language was quite similar. The House language is recommended for adoption here. So again, those three sections are the Permanent School Fund Earnings Task Force, the appropriation for that task force, and the uh, appropriation for Pelsby. And next, Madam Chair, is the A70 amendment, which has just been handed out to you. And this is uh, an amendment uh, that was heard in a different uh, committee as well this year. This is the uh, No Child Left Behind uh, provision where the Department of Management and Budget is required to do an annual report uh, uh, regarding the costs of opting out of the No Child Left Behind uh, program. Uh, MMB has asked for this provision to be repealed. They took that through the state government uh, 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 route this session, but this provision now is in front of you as the A70 amendment. Thank you, Mr. Strom. Um, I'm going to move the A70 amendment. Uh, any discussion on the A70? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of the A70 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Seeing no opposition, um, we will adopt the A70 amendment. All right. Let's move on to Article 2. Madam Chair. Oops, I'm sorry. I do need to make a statement. Thank you. Um, with that, I move that Article 11 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing, oops, seeing that um, they are all ayes, the Article 11 is adopted. Great, now we are moving on to Article 2. And uh, if nonpartisan would please walk through it. Uh, Madam Chair and members, um, uh, Article Two, um, you should have a, the the uh, landscape uh, orientation uh, roadmap uh, with a list of provisions in Article Two, Education Excellence. Um, uh, the first uh, section listed there um, is, uh, or I should say the first set of sections here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, uh, seven sections relate to the health education standards. And for that first section, there's an amendment, that's the A55 that's in front of you. Um, and this amendment will apply to uh, three of the sections that, we, that are, um, I'm sorry, four of the sections in the, in, the, in the bill all related to health education standards. So the, the amendment, um, it applies to the first section, the required standards, and it modifies when the um, health standards would apply um, because it would take a few years for those to, to um, be adopted and, and rule and become Ms. effective. Ms. Perry, could we just pause for a minute? Um, members are looking for this amendment. The A55. Ms. Stelman just brought that pack around for us. I have one here I can pass around. 55. Okay. Hi, 
raise your hand if you don't have one. <laughs> Thank you. And now you need one too, right? No, I'm fine. <laughs> I've got one right here. All righty, if you'd like to continue, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, so the amendment, um, it applies to that first section in the, in the House language there, um, and it means that the locally uh, adopted health standards would apply until statewide rules implementing statewide health standards are uh, required to be implemented in the classroom. Um, and there is similar um, language in the amendment um, that would apply to Section 2. Um, uh, modifying the House version there. Um, and the amendment also uh, deletes the uh, immediate effective date for Section 2, so it would, it would be in effect July 1, 2024. Um, uh, next is Section uh, 3 in the bill. Those were the same in House, and so the, uh, the proposal is to adopt the House version. Um, the next section, section four on rulemaking was also the same and the proposal is to adopt the house version. Um, section five on uh, reviewing uh, and revising the standards were the same and the proposal is for the house version. Um, section six similarly is the graduation requirements and those were, that, those were the same, the proposal is for the house version. And finally, um, the uh, section seven on the house side um, the health standards, the House and uh, Senate were similar. The House was codified and the Senate was not. The amendment before you um, moves the language that's on the House side to be um, uh, not codified, so it would be in session law. Um, substantively, it's the same um, as what you see in the House version. Uh, the, the head notes, though, for subdivisions two and three are slightly different. Um, Next is the uh, approval process, um, section nine on the House side and three on the Senate side. And the proposal is to adopt the Senate language as amended by the A25 uh, that's before you. Okay. I don't know if you wanted to talk about the A55. I think we, we should. Yeah. Um, so I am going to move the A55 amendment. Uh, is there any discussion to the A55 amendment? Uh, Chair Joachim. I just want to thank um, the authors of this bill and the health standards and all the work that's gone into it by the advocates on outside of the Capitol and especially to the students who have been asking for this for a long time. So I just want to do a thank you. Thank you, Chair Joachim. All right, so all those in favor of adopting the A55 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the A55 is amended, uh, adopted. All right, now we are on to the A25. Um, um, Madam Chair, members, um, there's uh, several sections related to the PTEC program. Um, those, um, and I think Senate, Senate uh, uh, Council or Research might be better able to explain those amendments. Thank you. Ms. Hofer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Conference Committee members. The A25, as Ms. Perrin noted, amends several sections related to the PTEC program. Beginning on page R7 of Article 2, it amends the Senate language to remove uh, the requirement that PTEC support grants be awarded for no more than two years. On page R16 of Article 2, it amends the Senate language to make the fiscal year 2025 appropriation of $791,000 available to only the PTEC school in Rochester. Uh, on page R17, uh, it amends the appropriation to provide uh, the PTEC school in Rochester up to $500,000 in fiscal year 2026 for a support grant. And in fiscal year 2027, it provides at least $250,000 to the PTEC school in Rochester for a support grant. Of these additional funds in 26 and 27 that were not dedicated to the Rochester School in PTEC, that funding would be available uh, for 
uh, startup and mentorship and technical assistance grants beginning in fiscal year 2026. Thank you so much. Um, members, any questions? Any discussion? Uh, Senator Bolden, would you like to speak to this? I would, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I just wanna uh, thank both chairs uh, for your collaboration and work on this amendment in particular. Uh, for those who uh, aren't maybe aren't as familiar with the PCHEC program, it is an excellent program. Um, currently, Rochester is the only uh, district in the state that has one, but hopefully in the future that will expand and Rochester is eager to be a resource for those other communities. But um, it really is a, a public private partnership um, that helps uh, students into careers, into careers that are needed in our community. So in, uh, there's an IT, IT track and a an, uh, healthcare track. Um, and it's an, it's an excellent program that um, really was at risk uh, and, and had lost some funding. And so appreciate the work that is in this amendment to uh, restore that funding and uh, be sure that the students who are in that program can continue um, and that really um, valuable program can continue in our community. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Bolden. Anyone else? All right. Senator Bolden, would you like to move the A25 for adoption? Yes, Madam Chair, that would be my motion. All right, all those in favor of the A25, please say aye. 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 Any um, opposition? All right, seeing no opposition, the A25 is adopted. All right, who would like to continue on with uh, the Article 2? Continue. Uh, Madam Chair and members, um, uh, the next section would be um, section 11 on the House side and seven on the Senate side relating to the Youth Council and those were similar, uh, those provisions, the proposal is to adopt the House uh, section. Um, and then the next uh, section is the emergency medical training grants and there is an A32 before you. Um, that modifies, I'll let Senate uh, Fiscal explain the amendment. Madam Chair and Conference Committee members, the A32 amendment in your packet, as Ms. Para noted, uh, amends the emergency uh, medical training grant uh, on page R9 on the Senate language. It provides up to $50,000 per year to the department for grant administration. Thank you. Let me continue. Uh, oh, excuse me, I, we need to adopt that mm -hmm. amendment. Thank you. Um, Senator Swadzinski, would you like to move um, to adopt the A32? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor of the A32, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Seeing none, the ayes have it, and the A32 is amended, is adopted. And if you would like to continue, Ms. Parrott, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, members, um, the, um, you have an amendment before you that is the A68, um, and the, um, the House carried um, language amending the computer science appropriation. Um, so the House proposes to adopt um, that appropriation, the modification to last year's appropriation, as well as an amendment to the session law from last year relating to computer science, educator training, and capacity building. Um, the changes, there's a, some ands being changed to ORs, um, for example, on line 1.9. So that's, this, will, um, this relates to a grant administered by the department. Um, uh, clarifies on one, line 1.12 that uh, it can be a single local educational agency or a consortium of local educational agencies um, on line uh, 3.16, uh, clarifying that the courses or content could be a, a standalone computer science course or uh, computer science content as part of a different course. Um, on line 3.20, again, uh, clarifying that it's uh, local education agencies or a consortium. Um, on line 323, um, adding computer science participation as part of the, the proposal. Um, for the grant, uh, Madam Chair, that is the uh, A68 amendment. Thank you, Ms. Para. So um, I'm going to move the A68 amendment. Members, are there any, is there any discussion on the A68? 
No, nope. seeing none. All those in favor of adopting the A68, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? The A68 is adopted as amended. Oop, is adopted. And then, um, Ms. Perra, if you'd like to continue on. Uh, Madam Chair, members, um, the next two sections modify the um, appropriations for the Ethnic Studies School Grants and the Full Service Community School Grants. And those were the same in the House and Senate. The proposal is to adopt the House provisions for both. Um, the next one is a Senate section uh, modifying the um, the appropriation to the Minnesota Council on Economic Education. The proposal is to adopt the Senate language. Um, the next section is the appropriation for non-exclusionary discipline uh, from last year, and both House and Senate had the same language. The proposal is to adopt the House language. Um, the next one is the P-TECH schools, which uh, Ms. Hofer walked you through earlier. Um, and then uh, the next section, section 18 on the House side and 16 on the Senate side is the appropriations. Um, and there are, so the appropriations in that section would be for the civic, educa for civic education as amended by the um, A33 that is before you. Um, and that adds uh, language um, uh, limiting the uh, amount available for grant administration to up to 3%. Thank you, Ms. Um, Para. Members, um, I'm going to offer the A33. Is there any discussion on that one? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the A33, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and so we will be adopting the A33. And the next one, please. Uh, Madam Chair and members, the next um, appropriation in that section would be for the Minnesota Youth Council. Um, that would be as amended by the A38 amendment that's before you. Um, and and these, this amendment makes the appropriation available until June 30th, 2026. Thank you, Ms. Para. Um, Ms. Uh, Representative um, Censor Mira, would you like to um, offer the A38 amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, so moved. Thank you. All those in favor of, oops, any discussion on that one? Oh, would you like to speak to yeah, that? Yeah, I can just speak to it. So this is um, funding that I think both houses heard and included for the Minnesota Youth Council. Um, so I think in 2017, uh, the legislature established the Minnesota Youth Council, but this is the first time that we are actually giving them funding. And so, you know, I think that making sure that um, the organization that we have deemed uh, Minnesota Alliance for Youth to um, run and administer the Youth Council, making sure that they have the resources to be able to engage young people from across our state uh, in our legislative process. I think is really important. I think we've seen that on you know a variety of issues, we're actually starting to you know put into um, law that we want to make sure that the youth council is at the table when we are um, making legislation, particularly legislation that has a large impact on youth. And so I think as we are you know kind of increasing the responsibilities, I think it makes a lot of sense to be funding this program. So I think both chairs were including this provision. Absolutely. Any other discussion or comments? All right, all those in favor of the A38, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? The ayes have it and the A38 is adopted. And the next one. Um, Madam Chair and Member, um, the next one you've actually already adopted. The oh, A55 um, had some language in there just clarifying that the appropriation for the health standards rulemaking um, uh, is also for administrative costs related to the health standards. Um, and uh, the final appropriation in that section is for PTEC. Um, that's um, as amended by the A25, which Ms. Hofer uh, walked you through. Okay. Um, and then there are two more sections. The next one um, relates to the crisis management policy, and um, I'll let uh, Senate staff walk you through that. Thank you. Ms. Perry. <clears throat> Madam Chair, members, the, the Senate had... Um, several provisions in a Senate Article 7 related to cardiac emergency response plans. Um, the remaining section that you see here in the A29 uh, uh, will be consolidated into Article 2 of the conference report. And so even though the, the header here on the amendment indicates that it's being inserted in what was Article 7, health and safety in the Senate language, uh, it'll, it'll ride here in Article 2. And the effect of the amendment is to uh, require the commissioner 
to maintain and make available to school boards and other uh, and charter schools uh, uh, cardiac emergency response plan, a, a model plan. And in subdivision two, uh, the, the new language in paragraph B uh, authorizes a school board or charter school to optionally adopt the model plan provided by the commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Arnson. Um, Senator Swadzinski, would you like to move the oh, A29? So moved. Thank you, Senator. All those, uh, any discussion on the A29? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of the A29, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The A29 is adopted. All right, and the next one. Madam Chair, there's one last provision to Article 2. Uh, this, has to, this amendment in your packet is labeled the A80. Uh, a little bit of background on this amendment. There was a, in the uh, Education Policy Bill, there was an uh, exception for four school districts whose newspapers had just recently closed. This essentially is similar language uh, uh, through the period of time, August 1st, 2026, for all school districts if their newspaper closes. The language is similar to that that was passed off the House floor in the state government bill uh, that applied to all political subdivisions. This amendment in front of you, the A80, is, list, is limited just to school districts. And additionally, on lines beginning on one point, line 1.8, there's a requirement that if a school district has no newspaper and is posting its uh, necessary publications on its website, that it also requests that that same information be posted at each of the public libraries located within the school district boundaries. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a one year, as, uh, essentially an exception until August 1st, 2026. So it would, it would run about two years uh, uh, for, for the exception. Uh, after that time would revert to the existing uh, rules regarding publication. In the absence of a local newspaper, there's a requirement that the school district mail those notices to, uh, uh, to the district's uh, uh, residents. Thank you, uh, Mr. Strom. So I'm going to move the A80 with uh, amendment. Is there, are there any questions? Would you like to speak to it, Senator McLean? Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, wow. Um, wake up. Um, I really appreciate the work that went into this and, and having the sunset provision. Um, you know, I love all of our school districts, but I want to make sure that government isn't policing itself. And I think these public notices are really important. And so I think there was a lot of care and attention that went into balancing that transparency with the reality of what we're experiencing across the state um, with some of our local newspapers. So I just wanna appreciate all of you for working on it. And um, thank you for the amendment. Yeah. And um, Chair Yoki. Yeah, I just wanna also thank um, Chair Kunish for being willing to take my little provision of having it also posted at libraries because not all of our um, residents have internet access and I just want to make sure that transparency is still there. Thank you, Chair. All right, any other questions or comments? Great, so with that, um, all those in favor of the A80, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? With the ayes, the A80 is amended, is um, adapted, adopted. <laughs> All right. So that um, concludes Article 2. And with that, I move Article 2 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The Article 2, as, adopt, as amended, is adopted. All right, we are going to move on to Article 3, the READ Act. And Ms. Para, I think you know the READ Act better than almost <laughs> anybody except one on this, uh, on this little uh, you here. Would you like to share it with us, please? Um, Madam Chair and members, yes, um, you should have in front of you um, the um, list of provisions for adoption in Article 3. It's a landscape orientation document. Um, and 
the READ Act, um, the, the policy conference committee report um, contained a number of um, policy provisions um, from the READ Act. So the House brought into um, conference committee the policy and finance provisions. Um, the Senate had just the finance provisions. Um, and the document before you lists just the finance provisions. Um, so the first of those is um, set, uh, House Section 16 and Senate Section 2. Um, the, the resources for the READ Act implementation partnership, and those were similar. Uh, the proposal is to adopt the House version. Uh, the next section is, was House Section 18, and that was a House-only provision relating to the development of volunteer and paraprofessional training. Um, and the proposal is to adopt the House language. Uh, next was the literacy incentive aid uses, House Section 22 and Senate Section 4, and those were similar. The proposal is to adopt the House language. And then next, um, you have an amendment before you that's the A73, and the A73 amends uh, three sections that were in the, in the bill um, and adds a fourth. Um, so the, I'll just walk you through those. Um, so the, the, the A73 um, amends two uh, uh, appropriation sections from last year. Um, the first relating to, um, uh, uh, let me turn to the page here, on page R15. Um, so last year the headnote was Read Act Curriculum and Intervention Materials Reimbursement. Um, the, the Senate um, changed the headnote aid, and so that's what it'll be now, is it'll be known as uh, the Read Act Literacy Aid. Um, and the language in the House and Senate bills were similar. Um, so the proposal um, adopts the House language but amends it um, uh, as I noted, the head note is amended, and then uh, paragraph D on page R16 at line 4818, um, that is stricken. Um, but the aid will be available, as noted on the House side, to implement requirements under the READ Act or for literacy incentive aid uses. Um, the next section that's amended is the one um, continuing on page R16. It's the um, READ Act professional development. Um, and uh, they're, they're, they're quite similar, the House and Senate side. Uh, the proposal is to adopt the House language, um, but uh, it is modified. Um, there's no uh, special revenue fund being created in the bill. Um, the House had that provision for special revenue fund, and the Senate did not. So under the, um, the proposal here, there would not be a, a rev special revenue fund, so that reference is being deleted. Um, in the amendment, and the appropriation for statewide training. Um, that training would be available to literacy professors from Minnesota institutions of higher education. That was one of the main differences between the House and the Senate. Um, the next, uh, the, the other change from the amendment um, is to the uh, 2025 appropriation for um, to compensate teachers for completing uh, uh, the required professional development. So there's a new section that you'll see on line 1.13 of the amendment um, that spells out how the money can be used. Um, in essence, the money will go out to districts on a per pupil basis. Um, and districts and uh, the exclusive representative teachers uh, negotiate um, uh, to determine how the money will be distributed to the teachers. Um, there'll be your districts will have to set up a reserve, um, uh, an account for, uh, for the aid and use it only for those purposes. Um, there are examples of allowable uses starting on line 1.22 um, that includes stipends, uh, payments based on uh, teachers' regular hourly rate of pay and number of hours necessary to complete the approved training and full or partial reimbursement for training uh, that was paid for by the teacher and later approved by the READ Act. Um, there's also um, a provision that says what teachers are eligible for the compensation. Um, that's subdivision three, um, an administrative process um, for the, for the um, requiring the memorandum of understanding. Um, subdivision five, uh, uh, prohibits the stipends from being considered income for, for certain purposes. Um, and then the appropriation section 
Um, as I said, there's no, the House had brought the special revenue fund coming into committee. That's not here anymore, so that's why it looks um, a little bit more like the Senate in terms of the structure. They're quite similar, the House and the Senate, though, the language. So um, 31.375 million is for the teacher compensation for READ Act training, and that's uh, the language that's in the amendment. Um, and uh, there's the appropriation of a million dollars for the culturally responsive materials. Um, 375,000 each uh, for the regional literacy networks and uh, for CARI, for uh, paraprofessional and volunteer training, and $100,000 for the READ Act Deaf, Deafblind, Hard of Hearing Working Group. Uh, and Madam Chair, that's the amendment. Mm. Take a breath. <laughs> All right. Um, Members, uh, any discussion on this? And I think I would like to welcome uh, Senator May Quaid. <laughs> First of all, I know you have put tens of 20s of 30 of hours into uh, this work. And uh, we just want to say thank you on behalf of Minnesota. Thank you very much for all the work that you've done for this, as well as um, Representative uh, Edelson. Edelson. Thank you so much. So any comments? Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, it's this has been, again, like the most collaborative process uh, requiring so many stakeholders and engagement. And yes, lots of hours, but all in the service of teaching kids how to read. And they are going to love it. Kids love learning how to read. You know, you're a librarian. Um, the thing that I really just wanted to note that I think is really important is the targets uh, for for our ed finance committees were about forty three million dollars. And before we had some creative ways to spend money, thirty five million of that was dedicated to the Read Act. And I know that neither chair and neither body looks at the money as theirs. But I can't imagine a time in which a chair would give almost all of a target to a bill that is not theirs. And I think that is truly remarkable um, and just demonstrates the, the willingness with which everybody has, has run into this. Um, so we started with that $35 million of that 43. Um, and then you know, we know districts are, we see the end of the ESSER funds. We know that inflation is rising. We know that our per pupil funding is str is struggling for some districts. Um, and so with potential budget cuts looming, we unlocked that additional um, 31, 35 million, all the numbers float together at this point, um, to also go to districts this year. And that is just an incredible sum of money that we are being able to put towards this program and implementation, and this will definitely not be the last year that we have to do serious work on it. This will be ongoing. I have a feeling I will do this till the day I retire, um, and I can pass it on to somebody else, and, and Representative Clardy will be my partner next year um, with the exit of Representative Edelson. So that is just, I, you know, I really want folks to understand how much, how many resources we're putting behind this bill, um, and the time that that staff have taken, that stakeholders have taken, that colleagues have taken to get this done um, is really going to show up in our schools and our, in our districts. And so um, that was the goal, was to make sure we had implementation resources and that money went to teachers, right? We already know that teachers are underpaid, um, they are undervalued, and they are the ones who are ultimately going to be implementing the READ Act on the ground with the students. And so it was so important that this money goes to them as well. So that's that's this bill, that is this amendment. And thank you to every person in this room, listening, watching, who might somewhere be um, part of this that might not be interested that much, but had a really big hand in it. So thank you. And especially Representative Edelson, who's I'm sure doing something amazing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Anyone else? Um, Chair Yoakim. I just want to thank uh, Representative McQuaid for being such a wonderful partner to Representative Edelson as she went through this to, again this year. You guys did amazing things last year and just improved on them this year. <coughs> and the creativity of us being able to put that 32, 37.25 million, if I can remember right, or 32.75 32 <coughs> forward. And then just <coughs> How emotional is this is. Emotional, yes. <laughs> I'll just say thank you. And thank you to Representative Edelson as I finish coughing. So I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Anybody else? <coughs> All right. So, Senator May Quaid, with that, would you like to move the A73? So moved. <coughs> thank you so much. All in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing the ayes have it, the A73 is adopted. Uh, Madam Chair, the final um, section proposed for adoption in the READ Act is the deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing working group. Um, those were the same in the House and Senate, and the proposal is the House language. Thank you so much. And I do believe that concludes um, the READ Act, Article 3. And so with that, I move Article 3 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it and Article 3 is adopted. All right, moving on to Article 4, the American Indian Education. Um, who, which nonpartisan would like to walk through this? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'm uh, glad to do this <clears throat> for the committee. Article 4 is the American Indian Education article. This was, was an article carried in the House bill. The Senate did not um, carry its provision in a separate article, but it, it did carry this provision in Article 2. Uh, the first row in the <clears throat> table relates to carry forward of funds under the American Indian um, Education Program aid. The provisions were, you know, very similar except for a, a slightly different effective date style and the recommendation or the, the item pr proposed for adoption is the Senate language. Uh, members should have a, uh, an amendment called <laughs> A35 in their packet. Uh, this amendment proposes a, a one-time mm -hmm. aid, uh, supplemental aid to American Indian schools um, in the amount of $40,000 in total uh, for fiscal year 2025. The aid amount would be apportioned among the four tribal contract schools um, in proportion to their 2024 uh, average daily membership served. Uh, the aid would be paid entirely in fiscal year 2025. And, and as I said, it's a, it's a one-time um, aid proposal. And that, that's the, the effect of the A35 amendment. Thank you, Mr. Arneson. So um, I am going to move the A35 amendment. Is there any discussion or questions on this amendment? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor of the A35, please say aye. 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 Any in opposition? Seeing none, the A35 is adopted. Uh, continue, please. Madam Chair, the last row on the table is uh, for an amendment marked A63, which members should have in their packets. Uh, this, this language, the new language is on page two of the amendment, and um, it would require the Commissioner of Education to consult with tribal nations located in Minnesota and Minnesota's Tribal Nations Education Committee about the need for additional funding necessary for each tribal nation to continue developing resources for indigenous education for all students. It would require the commissioner to, to link to these materials developed by the tribal nations on the uh, MDU website, submit a report to the legislature, uh, and, and makes clear that the consultation under this new language doesn't replace um, the consultation otherwise required under section 10.65. Thank you so much. And with that, I move that the A63, I, I move the A63 amendment. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the A63, please say aye. 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 Any in opposition? The ayes have it, and the A63 is uh, adopted. That concludes our Article 4, and so I move Article 4 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, and Article 4 is adopted.
All right, I think we're we're ready to begin. This is a big one, Article 5, um, nonpartisan. Who would like to take this one? Mr. Strong. Madam Chair, members, thank you. I'll do the first section of this article and we'll move on from there. Uh, article 1 relates to para, or I'm sorry, Article 5, Section 1 relates to paraprofessional training. There's an amendment in your packet, the A81. Uh, if you'd like, I'll describe that amendment and then uh, uh, someone can move that if they like. Thank you. Uh, what, what the amendment tries to do is address the situation that school districts and their paraprofessionals are facing this fall. Uh, the amendment uh, builds on last year's training uh, uh, and funding for training for paraprofessionals and essentially does, does a couple of things. It, it creates a uh, carve out for this year only uh, so that six of the eight hours that are ongoing are devoted to the paraprofessional uh, training activities that were, uh, that were created last year. Uh, in addition to that, for the remaining two hours worth of funding, that money is provided in the same ratio as funding as those six hours, but a school district has flexibility to use that funding uh, to help their paraprofessionals uh, pass, uh, participate in the paraprofessional uh, <coughs> test prep activities and pass their paraprofessional tests. Uh, to be a qualified paraprofessional for Title I and special ed purposes, the paraprofessional needs to meet either the criteria of the educational components um, <laughs> or uh, uh, meet the uh, 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 testing requirement. In Minnesota, two tests are offered. Those are the parapro and the um, uh, uh, forgive me, the uh, paraeducator is the second test. Um, so either of those two uh, options meets the federal criteria. The third criteria for those that have uh, been paraprofessionals for three years or, or more is they can meet a local assessment standard. Uh, currently what's used for that is the competency grid adopted by Pelsby uh, through the rulemaking process. And what this amendment does is essentially uh, form a quick uh, work group of Pelsby, the Department of Education and interested parties and has them uh, uh, consider uh, changes to the, to the assessment system and the cut scores that Minnesota uses and then allows uh, for the 24, 25 year only, allows a local assessment to be uh, met by a paraprofessional who's either demonstrating portions of the competencies required by Pelsby's uh, competency grid or uh, by uh, enrolling in and participating in the para pro or para educating training program on the, on the way to getting tested but it's the enrollment in the program that counts and for the 24-25 school year only this language is on 2.23 to 2.2 or I'm sorry on 2.28 to uh, 2.31 for the 24-25 school year only the uh, school's administrative staff is, uh, is uh, designed to provide administrative support to prepare professionals when filling out the, uh, the portions of the competency grid necessary to qualify for the 24-25 school year. So Madam Chair, that's in brief the uh, provisions that are in the paraprofessional training amendment in front of you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Strom. Any questions or comments on this one? I think Chair Joachim, you wanted to say something? I just wanted to thank all the advocates, um, both teachers and administrators that helped work on this amendment to make sure, I, and paras that helped work on this amendment to make sure that it was gonna work for our highly, to get paras highly qualified to make sure they're staying in our classroom and for the flexibility people showed when we were putting this together. Thank you so much. Senator Bolden, would you like to move the <clears throat> A81? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Um, all in favor of the A81, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the A81 um, is adopted. Would you like to continue? Uh, Madam Chair and members, um, the next uh, two sections, um, sections two and three in the House and one and two in the Senate uh, relate to uh, the QCOMP program. Um, and those were similar um, in, in, the, in the two bills. The proposal is to adopt the house, uh, uh, house provisions. Um, uh, next is a set of grow your own uh, program provisions. And for sections four and five of the House and three and four of the Senate, those were similar. The proposal is to adopt the Senate language, uh, but with the House's uh, effective date for each of those. 
Um, and then for section uh, six, uh, which is continuing with Grow Your Own program, um, those were, again, similar. Um, and the proposal is to adopt the house language except for paragraph C um, and with the house effective date. Um, the next section is the special education teacher pipeline. Those were similar um, with a different effective date and the proposal is to adopt the house language. Um, next is section eight, um, which is uh, also part of the special ed teacher pipeline program. Um, and the House and Senate had different, uh, uh, different changes there. The proposal is to adopt the House language. Um, and uh, the next section is paid leave for school closures, sec uh, House Section 9, Senate Section 9. And the proposal is the House language with the A57 um, amendment that's before you. Um, this provision relates to um, uh, the employees, uh, school employees, when school closes for um, weather or an emergency or, or some other reason. Um, and this, uh, the amendment adds a new paragraph that relates to uh, the school age care programs, school youth recreation enrichment programs, or general community education programs. Um, that if, the, if they close unexpectedly, uh, but still collect a fee, uh, for the program, if they, if they continue to collect that fee, um, they then must uh, still pay the uh, full stipend or full wages for scheduled work hours and benefits of the employees in those programs. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Representative Censor Miro, would you like to uh, move the A57? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move the A57. You know, we heard this in committee and, and just heard about the importance. I think we're doing a number of things to try to make sure that um, our paraprofessionals and other support staff are really, you know, getting the recognition and benefits that they deserve. And we know that schools are continuing to get um, funding for days when they are closed. And so we know that this money um, is there. And, and I think it makes a lot of sense to make sure that um, people are paid, uh, even if there's something like a snow day or something like that. Thank you, um, Representative. I, and I, too, um, really do support this amendment. As a teacher for you know, 25 years, I saw many, many times where schools were closed, and of course, especially when COVID hit, and our hourly workers, our paras, our EAs, um, all of a sudden were um, not getting their hourly rate. I mean, immediately their income ended. Uh, until we were able to establish that, yes, we needed to continue them. And I think that was a good lesson in, uh, in understanding that uh, if we do want people to work within, the, our, um, within our schools, that we have to make sure that they can afford to work in our schools. And so thank you uh, very much for um, bringing this forward. And uh, members, those in favor of the A57, please say aye. <coughs> Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, um, so the ayes have it and the A57 is adopted. Let's see, I think we are going to skip the next line and if you'd like to continue, is that correct? Um, Madam Chair members, I, we just had a little, I had to check, double check our notes, but I think we're good to go with House uh, <coughs> Section 10, Senate Section 12, the student support personnel aid. Those were, uh, those were different coming into conference committee. They relate to um, uh, the aid, uh, student support personnel aid in the fund balance and the proposal is to adopt the Senate language. Uh, the next uh, section is uh, House Section 11, Senate Section uh, 14, relating to um, the QCOMP program. And those were the same, uh, just with a different effective date. It's la amending, it's a, uh, last year's appropriation that just had to be adjusted. 
um, and the proposal is to adopt the Senate uh, language. Uh, the next section, House <coughs> Section 12 and Senate Section 15, uh, the Closing Educational Opportunities Gaps Grants appropriation from last year, um, just adding a line there that says the balance in the first year doesn't cancel but is available in the second year and taking the Senate language there. Um, the next section is the Grow Your Own Pathways uh, to Teacher Licensure Grants. Um, and there is an amendment before you, the A42. And the A42 um, actually applies to um, two appropriations. Um, the House and Senate um, uh, approach the same concept in different ways um, uh, relating to programs that were being modified in the statute. Um, the Senate um, had language in the statute itself allowing the commissioner to um, uh, allow a, a grant recipient to modify its program to align with the statutory changes. The House carried similar language in the rider for the appropriation. Um, so that applied to the Grow Your Own Pathway program and the special ed teacher pipeline. So that what you have before you is the A42, which does it a third way, um, which is uh, to have a, a, a separate section in session law um, uh, giving the commissioner that authority for those two programs. All right. Uh, oh, stop. Go ahead. All right. Um, so, uh, Representative Clarity, would you like to move the A42? Yes, Chair. So moved. Thank you. All in favor or any discussion or questions? Go ahead, Senator Mayquay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I will start with the caveat. I do know my own bills, but I'm <laughs> wondering if this is, is this one of my bills for the, um, the special ed um, apprenticeship program is that what this is or is this something different no no this is a little different thank you any other questions or comments all right all those in favor of the a42 please say aye aye, aye. any opposed <clears throat> the ayes have it and the a42 is adopted all right <laughs> moving on so uh, Madam Chair members, the next section was House Section 15, Senate Section 16, uh, relating to the teacher uh, mentoring program. Um, and those uh, were similar. Uh, the uh, proposal is for the House language. Um, the next one is House uh, Section 16, Senate Section 17, for the Student Support Personnel Workforce Pipeline. Um, last year's appropriation, um, those were the same, and the proposal is to adopt the House language. Uh, the next is House Section se uh, 17, Senate Section 18, the Teacher Residency Program, and the proposal is the House language. Next is section House Section 18, Senate Section 19, the uh, what's known as the Cugmac Program. Um, and those were different. Um, the proposal is for the House language. Uh, House Section 19, Senate Section 20, um, for uh, the Mentoring Induction and Retention Incentive Program grants for teachers of color. Um, and the proposal there is for the House language. Um, section House Section 20, Senate Section 21, the Pathway Preparation Grants, um, uh, amending last year's preparation uh, appropriation. Uh, those were the same, and the proposal is for the House <laughs> language. And next is um, the House. Um, it's a House-only provision, the Student Teacher Stipend Pilot Program. Um, so that's House Section 21, and you have the A75 in front of you. Um, which uh, amends both the, um, the section um, describing the program and the appropriation for the, for the program. And the, the change that you'll see on pages, uh, page one, line two through line nine, um, the change there is to add Augsburg University as a participant in the student teaching uh, pilot program. And so uh, that resulted in an adjustment of the um, there's a, the overall appropriation amount changed and the amount for each participant, each of the teacher prep program uh, providers, um, those, the numbers are different from what the House brought into committee and Augsburg, as I noted, is added there. That's in paragraph D, page two, line 11. Um, 
So that's the teacher, student teacher program. Uh, and then uh, there's also a, another appropriation that the Senate brought into the conference committee and that's um, just added to the appropriation, but it's the same language as what was in the Senate bill. That's subdivision three for a, a, a working group. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, Senator, uh, excuse me, uh, Representative Yao Akeem, would you like to move the A75 amendment? Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Chair Kunish. Um, this is something that was really important to the inspiring, aspiring teachers organization that came and testified in committee. And they are really, truly amazing advocates for this profession, which makes me feel very hopeful about the teachers coming through our doors soon into our schools. So um, without their voices at the table, none of this would have happened. And not without the support of our current educators that are helping shepherd them along, I just want to say thank you. <clears throat> so I'll uh, move the A75 amendment. Thank you. Any discussion, other, uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the A75 is adopted. Uh, Madam Chair, the next section uh, relates to the paraprofessional uh, qualifications, which that's, uh, the A81 applies to that, and Mr. Strom already walked you through um, that amendment. Um, the next section is the teacher and paraprofessional compensation working group. That was a Senate-only provision, and the proposal is to adopt that language. Um, it's on page R17 of the side-by-side. Um, and then the next section is uh, an appropriation um, for, for the Department of Education. Um, uh, the proposal there is to adopt the Senate language um, with the A39 amendment. Um, sorry, the House language with the, thank you, with the A39 amendment, um, which adds um, uh, a line relating to section 16B98, subdivision 14, um, which relates to the amount um, of administrative funds available to the department. Thank you so much. Representative Clarity, would you like to move the A39? Yes, Chair, so moved. Any discussion or questions on the A39? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the A39 is adopted. Uh, Madam Chair, members, the next section is um, the uh, appropriation for the paid student teacher um, pilot, um, which have, uh, we are, was already adopted. That's the A75, and also has the um, teacher and paraprofessional working group appropriation. And finally, um, there is um, the A45 amendment before you, and that is um, an appropriation um, uh, for transfer to the Commissioner of Higher Education for the Aspiring Teacher of Color Scholarship Program under our 2021 session law, and that's an appropriation for $1 million. Senator Swadzinski, would you like to move the A45 amendment? So moved. Members, any questions or discussion on the A45? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the A45 is amended. That concludes our Article 5. Um, with that, I move Article 5 be adopted as amended, and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The Article 5 is uh, adopted <clears throat> as amended. All right, moving right along, we have three more left, and this is the Article 7. Uh, nonpartisan, would you please walk through the Article 7? Chair, members, thank you. Article 7 is the special education article. This is on the 14-inch paper tonight. Uh, and you'll have uh, the A74 amendment to go with that when we, when we get to that. Uh, <clears throat> the first section, uh, the uh, recommendation is to take the Senate language, 
which was in Article 2, Section 5 originally, very similar to the House language. This has to do with the, the approval process for the Adults with Disabilities program. Uh, the, the next section, uh, the next two sections relate to third party billing and uh, the special education services that are covered under that that would be eligible essentially for medical assistance payments. And uh, what you have in front of you is the A74 amendment. Uh, this amendment combines language from the House and Senate bills and technical assistance from the Department of Human Services and the Department of Education and uh, I think is uh, fair to describe it as the intent of what both the House and the Senate were after uh, uh, by blending those, those two provisions and uh, 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 basically has to lay out the services that essentially would qualify the new services from last year's bill that would qualify uh, for the third party reimbursement. Uh, question? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm putting on my human services hat quickly. One of the things I believe we did this year is we um, created licensure for um, behavioral analysts. And I'm wondering if they are part of any of the pieces that we are pulling in in the A74. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator May Quaid, I don't believe so. The primary, uh, uh, the primary target here, if you turn to page uh, uh, tape page four, line eight, essentially we're talking about the services that a school social worker provides um, and it gets into the, uh, what, what, what expanded upon the language last year uh, uh, were what, ki what kinds of categories of service that school social workers provided that would, that would be uh, uh, considered reimbursable. So I'm, I'm not 100% certain of your question or my answer, but I, I think the short answer is no. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Um, <clears throat> Chair Joachim. Hi, sorry. Um, thank you, Chair Kunish. So this is something we've been working on for over three years is to get that MA reimbursement mm -hmm. for the folks that are the same license inside the school. We're not able to uh, access that funds, federal funds we were leaving on the table to those that have the same license outside the school and private practice. So it is a long time coming, and I wanna thank DHS and MDE for working so hard with the advocates over these last three years and going through all the details and teaching me more than I ever wanna know about CMS and third-party <laughs> billing, which is still about maybe 1%. So, um, and the only time I really wanna delve that deep into DHS. So thank you for that, and I'd like to introduce, I'd like to put forward the A74 Amendment. Thank you so much. Any other questions or discussion? Sensor Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to echo Chair Joachim, you know, I know that this was really huge. I've heard of a lot of schools and districts about this, um, the legislation that we passed last year. I know that there has been some, you know, just challenges and kind of schools understanding how to implement this. So um, I'm happy to see that we're coming back to give clarification. And I particularly think that the um, end of the amendment kind of um, clarifying about the psychotherapy for crisis is really important. You know, I know that we have amazing um, social workers at our school who are, you know, helping students when there are um, crises that happen. And so I'm glad that we're spelling this out as a as a um, something that they can bill for. Thank you so much. Anyone else? All right. So with that, uh, Chair Joachim offers the A76, uh, 74 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the A74 is adopted. Madam Chair, one last section that's the same in both the House and Senate is the adjustment of the special education regular appropriation for the additional BPK students. And as I said, that's the same. The recommendation is to take the Senate language. Thank you, Mr. Strom. With that, uh, we complete the Article 7. And so I am going to move Article 7 to be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to take any, uh, to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any op opposition? The ayes have it. The uh, Article 7 is adopted and we're moving on to Article 8. Nonpartisan, when you're ready. <clears throat> Madam Chair and, and members, Article 8 is the facilities article. <clears throat> 
sections one through three on the Senate side of the page come from this year's uh, public finance bill and were the uh, sections from that bill um, amending uh, sections in, in the E-12 Finance Committee's jurisdiction. Uh, just to note, um, comparable provisions had been carried in the House Taxes Bill, um, but my understanding is the, the agreement is to, is to carry the provisions here in the, these three provisions here in the K-12 Bill. Section one relates to review and comment. Um, uh, the recommendation is to adopt the uh, Senate language. Section two relates to publication, um, it extends the, uh, the window uh, for publication when, when referendum for bonds uh, uh, is required. Um, there is an amendment that was distributed just recently called the A43. The first instruction on the A43, A43 uh, makes an amendment to this section to uh, deleting 88 and inserting 70. So, so under the amended language, the, the districts would have uh, about a three-week uh, window for this uh, publication requirement. The second part of the A43 amendment adds some new language to section three. The new language <clears throat> would be inserted uh, at the bottom of the section, after the last period in paragraph uh, G, and it would clarify that uh, when no referendum from bonds is required, which is the case um, for uh, projects under this particular subdivision, uh, the school board must discuss the commissioner's uh, review and comment, and that district's approved in integration uh, achievement and integration plan findings at a school board meeting uh, within 45 days of the commissioner's determination. Madam Chair, that, that's the effect of the A43 on, on these first three sections on the adoption page. Thank you so much. Um, and so I move the A43 am amendment. Any questions or discussion on the A43? Chair Joachim. Thank you, Chair Kunish. And these are the public finance provisions that we saw in taxes. So the House kept them in the tax bill. The Senate stripped them out. Um, we'll have a discussion about that next session. I think they really do belong in public finance, but we also want them to keep moving. So um, I support the A43. Thank you so much. So with that, members, all in favor of the A43, say aye. 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 Any in opposition? The ayes have it, and the A43 is amended, uh, is adopted. Madam, Madam Chair, the, the next row on the adoption sheet is marked House Article 8, Section 1, and Senate Section 4. This language was the same in both the House and Senate relating to uh, grants for gender neutral single user restrooms. The uh, recommendation is to adopt uh, the Senate language. <clears throat> and finally, uh, House Article 8, Section 2, and Senate Section 5 were similar except for the effective date. This is the increase to the appropriation for long term facilities maintenance equalized aid. And the increase is attributable to the additional VPK seats authorized uh, later in this bill. Uh, and the proposal here is to adopt the Senate language. Members, any questions on Article 8? Seeing none, I move Article 8 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Article 8 is adopted. Our last article, Article 10, if nonpartisan would like to begin. Madam Chair, our expert Annie Mock is not with us tonight, but I'm happy to jump in here. Uh, uh, section 1 of House Article 10, uh, uh, Section 1 of the House and Senate Section 3 are very similar. Uh, uh, the recommendation is to go to the House. This uh, language, this increases the uh, participation limits for the, for the expanded BPK seats for this year. Uh, again, just a technical difference between the language between the House and the Senate there. 
Uh, the next two provisions are amended by the A77 amendment. Um, essentially what, uh, what these uh, provisions have to do with is the Early Learning Scholarship Program. Uh, as, as members who serve on that committee or, or are familiar with that world know, uh, there's a reserve account for the Early Learning Scholarships. There was a substantial increase in the funding for that program. And uh, there's been a request to design essentially a, a new computer system to uh, help with the payments so that the payments can go out to the child care providers sooner. Uh, the amendment in front of you is labeled the A77 amendment. And uh, essentially this amendment uh, passed the House uh, uh, in, the, in the early education bill. Uh, uh, something very similar to this, and, and what it does, uh, the primary change is if you look at uh, uh, lines uh, 1.12 and 1.13, essentially what's going on is the amount of uh, the funding uh, from the scholarship fund that can be spent on the IT systems on the one-time setup basis is increased from five to $12 million. And then beginning on line uh, 1.15, you can see, uh, uh, beginning in fiscal year uh, 26, after July 1st, 2025, uh, the commissioner of the new agency is authorized to use $2.4 million annually out of that fund uh, to keep the uh, information technology systems up and running and maintain them in a way that helps provide a proficient, uh, uh, an efficient outlay of those funds to the various child care providers. <coughs> Uh, Senator McQuaid, would you like to move the A77? Uh, so moved, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments on this? Senator McQuaid. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, you know, one of the things um, that was true last session is that we were able to accomplish things that we spent, you know, 10, 15 years working for. And I think one of the things that we were, are quickly arriving to is that 10, 15 year mark of affordable childcare in Minnesota, um, where no family has to spend more than 7% of their income on childcare. I have a little, she's two now, um, but when we started daycare, it was half of my legislative salary. And these little pieces here might not seem super important or, or you know, exciting, but these are the exact kinds of steps that move us to a place where we can have that kind of system. And it is going to be things like information technology systems so we can pay our child care providers because they can't wait even an extra week sometimes before they um, would run out of funds. And so I am just really grateful that we are able to continue to take these steps to arrive at that place and, and continue to have the conversations. And I just want Minnesota parents to know that this has the legislature's full attention. Um, and as long as we can continue making these steps, we will get to that place very soon. Thank you so much, Senator. Any quest other questions or comments? Senator, <laughs> Representative Senator Mira. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to echo a lot of um, what Senator McCoy said. You know, I know that there was a, a at the beginning of the session, I think there was hope that we would maybe be able to do a much larger package around child care affordability. And as a, also as a mom of a two-year-old, that was something I was really, really pushing for. Um, and so it's definitely something that I plan on, you know, if we are back next session, really pushing for. And so I'm, I'm happy that we were able to take these small steps to, to build the infrastructure because, you know, we just earlier this week had folks from northern Minnesota come down for the day without child care. I know that when I have a day without child care, <laughs> it's a really miserable day. Um, you know, and I, I know that the goals of the Great Start task force of no family paying more than 7% and also making sure that we are increasing the pay for our early child care workers who are doing really, you know, incredible and amazing work with our youngest citizens is, is a priority that I think for many, many folks in this legislature. So I'm happy that we're taking these steps. Thanks for you both chairs for including this provision. Thank you, Representative. Anyone else? All right. Not seeing any more comments. Um, Senator McQuaid moves the A77 amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Any op opposition? None. The A77 is adopted. Madam Chair, members, the next provision, uh, House uh, uh, Section 4 and Senate Section 5, is the set aside of the Head Start program money for administrative purposes. Uh, the uh, Senate provision is the one proposed for adoption. 
uh, that would be a 2% set aside per year beginning in fiscal year 25. Uh, the next provision uh, relates to the early childhood curriculum grants, and this is just carry forward language, clarifying that the 24 appropriation can roll forward into 25, should it not be all expended in 24. Then the next uh, provision is uh, from the Senate bill. This is Senate section seven, and there's an amendment in your packet labeled the A28. Essentially what this provision does and what the amendment does is clarify the timelines and extend them just a little longer uh, for the Department of Education to ensure that the, uh, the, the, uh, app, the award list for the 5,200 new seats for uh, voluntary pre-kindergarten are, are all straightened out, that all the districts are aware that the new list is created. <laughs> Um, so essentially by pushing the date out a bit, uh, the idea is that the list will be uh, uh, rerun and those um, uh, 5,200 seats will be allocated amongst the five uh, pre-kindergarten, uh, voluntary pre-kindergarten regions in the state. Uh, Madam Chair, that's the uh, A28 amendment. Thank you so much. Senator Swadzinski, would you like to move the A28? So moved. All right. Any questions or comments on that one? A28. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? The ayes have it, and the A28 is amended. Madam. Adopted. <laughs> Madam Chair, the last uh, provision is similar in the House and Senate. This is the uh, repealer of the one-time money from last year that's now put on the VPK formula. Uh, the proposal is to go with the slightly uh, more clear language from the Senate. Members, are there any questions on Article 10, the early education, early childhood education? All right. Seeing none, with that, I move Article 10 be adopted as amended and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any technical changes as necessary. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, and Article 10 is adopted. So, members, with that, we have. Pardon? Sure. Um, we um, complete all the, the articles and the amendments that we have prepared so far. Does anybody have any comments or uh, anything you'd like to say about the work that we've done tonight or uh, anything in general? Uh, Senator McQuaid. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just prepared like a 30-minute speech if I could just go through. Perfect. This. No, um, I just want to thank you all for your work, and I especially as we get to the end of, of session, um, staff do so much work um, just preparing these amendments and hearing the things that we're saying out loud and making them actually legal, and the reviser's office is up late putting all of this into things that are engrossed, things that a lot of us don't see. And so I just want to thank partisan staff, nonpartisan staff um, for making sure that all of this gets done as we head into these final days. And that includes, you know, all of the members of this committee as well. Thank you, Senator. Anyone else? Uh, Senator Clarity. Uh, excuse me, Representative Clarity. I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> come on over. Um, I am really excited about all the provisions in this bill. Um, we've done a lot of justice to our kids. We're giving them a really good curriculum by getting, giving them really good and skilled teachers and peer professionals that are with them. Um, the READ Act will be, you know, skill building for them, which is a lifetime skill. Um, and I, I, I guess I'm really proud of how the money was uh, divided because we, we did a lot in this little bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did a really lot. And so I just wanted to thank you all for working so hard and diligently on the bill to, uh, you know, make our schools great for our kids. Thank you, Representative. Representative Spencer Maurer. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I just want to say that I think this, um, both committees did a really good job of, you know, moving forward priorities that we had from last year, like the READ Act, we came into session really knowing that, um, school districts are really excited about implementing it and also that they were facing some barriers or challenges. And I think um, I really appreciate the work of um, Representative Edelson and Senator May Quaid on, on helping our school districts meet this moment. We're asking them to do a lot and we need to give them support to do that. But I also appreciate that there was, I think, flexibility on the part of both chairs to kind of um, 
recognize uh, issues that came up that maybe we weren't expecting. You know, I carried the provisions around attendance. That was not necessarily something that I came into session understanding the huge attendance um, issue that we had. But, you know, through the part of my district advocates and I know other representatives like Representative Keeler and Representative Bakeberg, you know, really, um, I think, helped shine a light on this huge issue that we're seeing. Um, and so I, I really appreciate the work that we've done. And I think it's just important to say that, you know, we know that it's a really hard moment for our schools and our school districts. Senator McQuaid alluded earlier to, you know, ESSER funds are ending. Um, and so, you know, we had four years of a cushion of support in my district in particular had four years of a cushion support and and um, having that end is 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 some really painful decisions mm -hmm. for our school district. So um, I appreciate everything that we tried to do to, to fill those gaps where we could. And I feel really committed to, you know, continuing the work as we move forward because there's just a lot of work to do. There is, and we're, we're very lucky to have your representative on this committee and doing the work that you do. Anybody else like to make a comment? Well, um, we, oh, excuse me, uh, Sherry Hakeem. I just want to thank, um, as I'll echo the statements of thanking our staff. I know I can't even imagine the long hours. We put in a lot of hours, but you put in even more on all the drafts and redrafts and amendments. And I want to thank Chair Kunish for being such an amazing partner in working together to figure out what we can do what's best for kids and all of you on this conference committee. I know you all care deeply about what our schools look like and the products we're putting out in our children that are going to help carry us into the future. And we did do a lot with this bill. Um, didn't We didn't have quite the target we did last year, of course, because it's a supplemental budget bill. But while we did a lot last year, I think this year, by listening to our districts and listening to our teachers and our students and all those around, we built on what we did last year, especially in the READ Act and all that went into that. Um, with this bill, we're putting more teachers in our classroom. We're keeping more students in our classroom. And I would also like to thank uh, Representative Keeler and Representative Bakeberg for working on the attendance task force. And then also, I'm really excited about the attendance pilot projects and thank the Senate for bringing in three more schools so that we can have a really comprehensive program, pilot program across the state. And hopefully the data from that and the task force will really help us figure out how to invest in making sure that our kids are actively engaged, staying in school on, on the path to graduation. And then also the, um, the support all of our colleagues give to putting students at the center and making sure their voices are heard at these tables um, because you can't really do things for them without them. So I want to thank everybody for their hard work. And I'm sure we have a little bit more work to do to close up the spreadsheet. But um, you will be hearing about tomorrow's conference committee as soon as we have it scheduled. Yep. Uh, and I, I also want to chime in and, and thank our nonpartisan staff. Uh, I've worked with both of these groups of people, both in the House and the Senate, and uh, I could never pick the, you know, between you two because uh, <laughs> both groups are just like, <laughs> wink, wink, uh, are so spectacular in their knowledge. I, I think every day I just... In my mind, my, my jaws drop with the, the um, wealth of knowledge and information that you all have at your fingertips and are able to make sense when our brains are just uh, spinning. And so thank you ever so much. There are a lot of people out in the audience here this evening. It's, all, it's a little after 9 p.m. And I see a lot of folks out there whose... Um, careers and hearts and, and spirits are dedicated to our students. And while we don't always see things the same, uh, the same way, uh, we, I think you know um, that we also have our students at, at heart and we know, know that as well. So um, I really appreciate your depth of knowledge and your years of experience working in the educational system. We all come to this from uh, different places. Uh, me as a teacher of 25 years, Senator Swadzinski as well, um, Senator Bold in healthcare. Uh, all of you bring another educator, another educator, you know. Uh, all bring your own unique perspective and life and professional experiences to the work that we do. And we're all on these committees because we're committed to students, we're committed to families, we're committed to communities. 
Uh, we've had two years, two excellent, excellent years building an educational system that we hope and pray are going to pull our students out of their funk, uh, help them regain their, their mental and their social health, uh, and, and make sure that our teachers and our administration administrators also have those tools that are going to make their job not only doable, but enjoyable. You know, let's bring the, the joy of education and learning and collaboration back into education. Senator Swadzinski and I toured a number of schools, over a dozen schools this past summer from north to south, east to west. And we learned so much, we heard so much. Uh, it was just a really, really exciting and most enjoyable um, experience that we'd like to continue to do that. I have to thank my um, lovely assistant, Sammy Rajab, and my LA back there. Uh, um, it's just been really great doing this, this work with you, Emma, and the rest of you, as well as the House members and uh, staff. So with that, and it's getting late, and I start talking a lot when I'm tired, but um, I'm going to... Um, bring this this meeting to an end we will prob we will be meeting tomorrow to tie up some of the final um, bits and pieces that we have uh, not quite completed and we will keep you posted as to what time and the location as soon as we've um, come to that conclusion and so with that members and audience we are adjourned <laughs>